couple people, quite a few people have asked me what they should bring on a camping trip. And I'm talking about a family camping trip. The answer to that is, well, it's a loaded question because first and foremost, uh, you got to ask the, the question, where are you going? Are you going there by vehicle? Are you going by car? Like, are you going to drive to a site? Um, and that's a lot of people do that for family camps, etc. The other type of camping is what I do, which is deep woods camping. So you're going to throw stuff into a canoe and away you go. That means you're going to be packing light. Um, if you're going away on a family camping trip and you're going to drive to the site, you can load up your, your car, your vehicle as much as you want. So today I'm going to go through the bare bones, like basically what you really truly need. The first thing you want to do when you get to any campsite, right now I just looked at the sky, we got ultra cirrus clouds coming in. Learn to read the sky. Ultra cirrus clouds literally, uh, honestly, they're very, very, it's almost like a sheer curtain coming across the sky. Those clouds indicate that we're going to get weather sometime this afternoon, if not tomorrow. So the first thing you want to do when you get to a campsite, set up your tent. Well, this is typical of any Algonquin area uh, campsite. You're going to have roots in the ground. You're going to have all kinds of stuff. Um, you're going to have a fire pit, a body of water. So the first thing you want to do is scan, scan your, your area. Make sure everything's cleared up. You don't have any branches sitting on the ground before you set up your tent. You're going to have those roots. Do not chop those roots out. Leave them alone. Live with them. That's what you got to do. Just live with them. Don't worry about it. You chop those roots out, you're going to affect the tree, right? Anyway, uh, this is still pretty much a light sort of setup but I will go through it all. That's the tent in that bag. That tent weighs about 13 pounds. That's called the Algonquin. Weird, I just realized that. This is bought from Costco years and years and years ago. I don't think I've set this tent up for probably 15 years. So I recently did a, an adventure to Costco. They have tents. One of the tents that they have there recently, this particular tent came from Costco. Uh, they don't have this particular model there now, but they have another model made by Woods. It's in the store. Online, they have several models. Now the woods tent that is at Costco right now, it looks A1, man. It looks all right for family camping. It looks great. Uh, before I get any further into the weeds on this, when you buy a tent, if it says a two-person tent, really it's one, okay? I mean, it's just got enough room for your gear and yourself and your sleeping pad. Um, if you buy a four-person tent, it's really comfy for two. It's beautiful for two. Again, a six-person tent is comfy for four. If you have a four-person family, for example, I would suggest you buy a six to an eight-person tent. I, I really, truly would. Don't buy a tent that says water-resistant. You're going to get soaked. Or you're going to end up putting a tarp over it, which is goofy. I mean, the tent should... I mean, the tent's a tent. It should keep you covered, right? Um, make sure it says waterproof, right? It'll say it on the specs. You'll see it. When you buy a tent, be it from Costco, Canadian Tire, wherever you might buy it, one of the outfitting stores, make sure you set it up at home, okay, before you get to the campsite. It's just because um, you don't want to be dealing with a whole bunch of poles and a whole bunch of stuff that you don't understand what you're doing. Make sure you set it up because you know what? You could end up at your campsite and it's pouring rain out. Then you're in trouble. Now, most... Tent manufacturers and most people who set up tents will tell you to stake the tent first. I disagree with that. Why? I've been camping for over 60 years and I can promise you, you're gonna wanna move your tent around. Like what I mean by that is you wanna get it in the right position. Right now, this tent is set up. I can pull it and move it exactly where I want and then I'll peg it. So this tent is absolutely massive. I mean, it is a big tent. And here's one really cool thing about this tent. It's got a screen porch, right? Built right in, right? These side guy wires. When you buy a tent, these ones, this particular guy wire, you can see it has these white sort of court braided braids in it. That reflects light at night. It's a good thing if you don't want to do a header. Now this tent is fantastic because it does have this screen porch area. One thing I must caution though, if you're sleeping in, if you're camping anywhere in like say bear country or anything, I would highly recommend you do not eat in here. Honestly, don't eat in here. I know it's going to be tempting as crazy, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it, right? It's not so much the bears, it's the chipmunks, the squirrels, the raccoons, everybody else is coming through here. It's got a huge door. Look at this thing, massive door, right? 
It's so easy, this tent. It's just so amazing. It's got all these pockets for storage stuff. Perfect for family camping. Now, I'm not sure if you can buy this tent anymore. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm sure they got models out there very much like this. Your tent is the very most important piece of equipment you can ever bring to a camp. If you're car camping, you can certainly bring some monster like this thing here. This is a four person or six person tent. I can't remember what it is. I don't even know if they make it still. Regardless, it's a wonderful tent for car camping or for base camping, right? It's got a back vestibule here where you can store gear under. You can pull it out a little bit further and store your gear there so it's not in the tent. And it's, uh, it's fully waterproof. And what's really cool is it's windproof too, to a certain degree, okay? It's got that big screen porch on the front of it. And it's got a super easy access to get inside. And the access is from the outside here. The reason I'm showing you this tent, even if it is discontinued, there are certainly tents like this out there. I'm just su su simply suggesting that getting a tent like this will make your life absolutely comfortable while you're at camp, okay? And then obviously the inside, the spacious inside here, right? And I'll show you all the other gear that you must bring or you should bring when you're camping. Okay, now you've got your tent set up. It's a beautiful day today, but if it's pouring rain out there, you wanna get this tent up as fast as you can get it up, okay? And if it's buggy, you gotta keep all the screens closed because otherwise you're gonna go crazy at night slapping yourself silly. The very next thing you want to do is set up your sleeping system. You can get this at Costco too. Uh, not this particular model, but you can certainly buy them at Costco. This one came from Canadian Tire. It's a bed. It's literally a, a cot. All right. And they're super simple to put up. The beautiful thing about base camping is you can certainly bring one of these. And they are comfy as crazy. You don't have to worry about roots or anything. And you just crash out on this thing and oh, you're in luxury. The other cool thing about this is you've got room to store your gear underneath. All your gear can go underneath the cot. It's not in your way. The problem with cots is, is that they take up a lot of room. I mean, they're luxury item and they take up a lot of room. So this four person tent, like comfortably four people, becomes a two person tent because by the time you put the, another cot like this on that side of the tent, you're done. You've only got room for walking. That's it. Okay, this um, uh, Thermarest style thing, I shouldn't call it a Thermarest because it's not, but it's, a, it's called an Expedition Mat and it's made by North 49. Again, I bought it from Costco. This thing is incredibly comfortable. I do not bring this on canoe trips because they're just simply too bulky. But for base camping and, and around the house here, oh my God. So you just unroll it. There's a little valve here, okay? See that valve? Just open it. Here it's sucking air in. Just let it sit and it'll uh, fill up. Okay, so we have the camp cot set up and then this thing's finally inflated. Um, you can certainly combine the two for a super comfy sleep at night um, out here. Absolutely, for sure. Or you can skip the cot and just put this on the ground and it's pretty comfy, okay? The only thing is, well, you're on the ground. Now there's another unit I wanna show you and this one I love. This is the one I take canoeing with me all the time. Now it's relatively expensive, it was 62 bucks, uh, Algonquin Outfitters. This is called the Z Light Soul and it's made by Thermarest. So it's got an R value of two. It's got a silver reflective, um, lining on it, which is great. Let's open it up and see what she looks like. So there it is opened up. That's the Thermarest Z Light. Uh, that's all I take when I'm canoeing. That's it. That just goes on the ground and I sleep right on top of that and I'm comfy. It doesn't seem like much. It's very thin, but I, I promise it's a, it's a comfortable sleep. It all depends on what you're up to, right? Now, the other thing too, is when you're base camping or when you're going family camping for by all means, you can combine all three. So those are uh, your three sleeping type pads that are out there. There's many models, many makes, different styles. Uh, just remember that everything takes room and everything weighs. So it depends on what you're doing. If you're car camping, base camping, go for the cot, 100%. Oh, I've, I've put this Thermarest, oh, it's not Thermarest, the, um, the uh, self-inflating pad mattress on the floor to show you uh, how little room it takes as compared to the cot, right? So you can certainly get one, two, three, and four of those easy in a tent. 
you can only get two cots in this tent. That's for sure. So you got your tent set up. Your uh, sleeping set is in there, whatever it might be. So you've got that all set up. So now you have to say to yourself, okay, what do you want to do? You want to set up a chair. These things are fantastic. I mean, they're incredible. They weigh nothing. They can go on your canoe seat while you're portaging. It's beautiful. And all you do is just simply open it up. Now you're on the ground though, right? But you open it up and you sit in it and uh, you can lean back. It's a beautiful thing. They're so simple. Um, in any tent, you can bring it inside the tent and sit in the tent. Now, but we're base camping, so you might not want to be sitting on the ground. This one is my preferred for canoeing for sure. Okay, let's start with the basic. This is just a basic stool that I uh, purchased from Canadian Tire. The neat thing about this stool though, if you're base camping or whatever you're doing, you can use it as a place to put your plates or whatever it might be. It serves as a table. It's quite awesome for that. That's the stool, okay? Easy to carry, not a problem. Next things are bulky. This one here is really bulky. This is your standard fold-out chair, like your, your sports chair, so to speak. And you all are well aware of these things. Absolutely, if you can fit it in your car, fit it in your car and away you go. Uh, why not? If you're canoeing, and you're portaging, forget it, this stays home. Okay, for sure, this stays home. Uh, they're just too bulky and too heavy, they take up too much room. Now, you know, things evolve, they constantly evolve, and uh, camping products are evolving all the time. So having, speaking, speaking of that, there's another Costco product. This was given to me by a close friend, and this is a fold-out chair. It takes a bit to put together, but man, is it ever comfy. It all fits in a nice little bag. Easy to take canoeing, portaging, whatever. It doesn't weigh, it weighs maybe a pound, maybe a pound and a half. Little Velcro strap here. And pretty much self-explanatory as to how it goes together. So, it's like some spider thing. <laughs> Who engineers this stuff, eh? You gotta, you gotta wonder. Like, it's quite fascinating. There, it's done. Okay, here you go. One, two. Woo, she's all done, look at that, man. So that's the chair, isn't that freaking cool? Look at that thing. That's awesome, man. It's got a little cup holder, the whole works. Let's see. Oh, yes. Whoo, that is a nice chair. Wow. Okay, this thing beats the stool and it beats this. It beats this to hell for sure. Man, this is comfy. And it took me nothing to set it up, you see? Next thing that you have to think about bringing is what are you going to cook on? So I bought this set years ago. It's made by GSI. Very good set. I want you to remember something though. With anything that is Teflon coated, this is Teflon coated. Do not put it on a fire. Don't do it. You'll destroy the pan. You'll absolutely destroy it. So this set comes with a frying pan. That's obviously the lid for it. And this is what's really cool. It's got, there's four cups here. And in the cups, uh, well, I just put, like there's condiments such as salt and pepper and whatever oil, right? And these are drinking cups. So they're great. There's four of them. There's, there's, there's two cups in each, each, each piece here. So that's great. So you've got your cups, another cup here. That's going to have, if I'm right. Yeah. It's good. I've got the all important tool. There's your, there's your handle. Oh, while I'm saying this, please remember to bring a leather glove. Okay. Be it a, um, even a, even an oven mitt, one of the old school oven mitts. I wouldn't bring this, um, a silicone style, but whatever, whatever you want to bring, bring them. Okay, because you never know what you're going to be handling around with hot stuff. So this is the kit here that has all the utensils that you need. Now Costco does sell this, okay, it's, it's a little bit more expanded than this particular one. Beautiful set. Not to be used on a fire though, this is to be used just with this set, okay. So that's your spatula, it's got a little wee cutting board, tongs, your ladle, scraper of some sort. So that's that, and then you have a pot. 
right? A pot to boil water in or whatever. This is all you need when you're camping, really and truly. Now, if you're going with a family, you're gonna to wanna to bring a larger set. I'd highly recommend that you bring, if you're family camping, bring a two or a three burner stove. This stove's 30 years old, at least. You know, it's still a hell of a lot younger than I am, but whatever. Secret to these stoves is you've got to let them heat up, okay? This tube has to heat up, so we're good now. We can cook. Uh, there's a good sale on GSI utensils at Costco. Uh, I believe it's on right now. I saw them there not too long ago. Back in your car now. You're ready to go, okay? So make sure you got your tent. Don't forget the poles and the pegs. I've seen it countless times where people... <laughs> Especially up in Algonquin where I canoe, I've literally seen people trying to make do with sticks and stuff to hold their tent up because they forgot the poles. Always remember your poles, okay? So anyway, regardless, tent. The next thing you're gonna need is your sleeping system. Make sure that the sleeping bag is rated for zero degrees or below that. There's a lot of sleeping bags out there that are rated for 10 degrees Celsius which is 50 Fahrenheit, um, don't get those bags, don't. Up here, even in the middle of July and August, we can drop down to 10 degrees at night. It can happen, right? So you gotta stay warm and a sleeping bag, the rating on sleeping bags is completely erroneous. It's not actual fact, okay? This sleeping bag that's in here, right here, is rated for minus 10 degrees C. I can promise you it's only good to zero. Do not buy down. I've had down sleeping bags. The problem is when they get wet, either by your moisture from your body or from rain, it loses its insulative value almost right away. So you wanna make sure that you get a proper sleeping bag that's rated for the temperature that you think you're gonna be camping in. So this is the next thing you're gonna pack. Make sure you bring sleeping bags for everybody. And if you're going car camping, in other words, you're bringing a car to the site, absolutely load it up with blankets and everything else. You never know when you're gonna need them, okay? On a canoe trip, you don't have that luxury. So your sleeping bag next. This pillow here, this is made by Thermarest. So it just wraps up into nothing. You puff it up, you let it, you let it puff up for a bit, right? And um, there you go, you got your pillow. Next thing that you wanna do, and this is very important, always, always, always pack a first aid kit. Shit happens out here that you wouldn't believe. Make sure you have your pot sets. Whatever you wanna cook in, bring your pot sets and um, make sure you've got that packed. That's your next thing. Now, having said that, if you can find an iron skillet, bring it. Because they cook, oh my God, when you put that on a fire, you can't put any of this gear, which is the GSI gear, you can't put this on a, on a fire. You can't, you'll destroy the pot. So, but however, you put an iron skillet on a fire and you throw your bacon and your eggs or whatever you eat into that, oh my God, the taste is out of this world. It, it is just, I can't explain it, you have to taste it. An, a good old fashioned iron skillet. Oil it up first before you bring it, right? So your pots, and don't forget your cutlery, your bowls, your plates, all of that stuff. Make sure you've got that containerized and you put that in your car. Bring chairs. You can't always count on them being around a campsite wherever you're gonna camp. I would definitely bring chairs. This one, as I demonstrated, sets up in seconds and it's comfy as crazy. How many people are in your family? Bring them, okay? four, five, whatever it is. Just bring the chairs, make sure you got those. Um, one thing that people forget to do is, now your vehicle is probably right there. If you're gonna go family camping, your vehicle's right nearby. So you can charge up all your cameras, et cetera, et cetera. I got a camera right, my camera. I've got my phone right here. Um, so in order to charge that phone up, when I'm on a canoe trip, I carry this. It's called a Goal Zero. This one you have to purchase from an outfitting store, uh, generally speaking like Algonquin Outfitters, uh, places like that. The Gold Zero is, is a fascinating unit. It is, this one's been beat up and it's, it, it still is absolutely wonderful. Um, it's got two solar panels, right? And then at the back it has a battery pack, which, and this is an older unit. This battery pack is charged by the solar panels. And you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, 
but the red light is flashing right now on it saying that the batteries are being charged. At the same time it's charging the batteries, it can charge your phone or whatever other device you have that's USB connected, right? So this I carry on every canoe trip, whether it's a day trip, whether it's a long 14 day trip, it doesn't matter, it's coming with me. So having said that, make sure that you bring some sort of charging device for your phones, your cameras, etc. Why? Because you know what? When your kids are running into that lake and you want to catch that moment and your battery's dead on your phone, you're sunk. This way you're always going to have a charge on your phone, right? So make sure that gets packed. So I know that's a long way from food and everything else, but nowadays phones are almost as important as food in some people's heads. So one thing I forgot to mention, um, this little grill thing, right? This is great for around a fire. It costs like 10 bucks, 11 bucks, whatever it was. I got this from, from Canadian Tire, but these things are just absolutely fantastic. Just just because they weigh nothing and you can use them for all different kinds of things. So make sure you pack something like that, okay? There's another item, believe it or not, that people forget. It's one of the most basic items you could ever carry. TP, toilet paper. It is literally shitty. <laughs> it's shitty when you get to camp and you open up your pack and you say, oh my, jeez, Matt, what the freak is going on? you forget your toilet paper. Wiping your ass with leaves, not fun. Not, not fun at all. So make sure you bring enough toilet paper this time, right? don't forget it. Make sure you got it. The other thing too, you need to bring a stove, be it a Coleman stove or a stove like that, a naphtha gas stove or a propane stove, whatever, bring it. Always bring a day pack because you're gonna be hiking. You're gonna be doing stuff that you never even knew you were gonna do. In a day pack, you can fit so much. This happens to be a Swiss Army pack. And again, you can buy these at Costco. Uh, fantastic packs, not waterproof. Nope, not waterproof. However, all you have to do is put a garbage bag in them, throw all your gear inside the garbage bag, eh, you're good to go, all right? Now, the other thing that a lot of people forget, um, unless of course you're a smoker or whatever, is some means of lighting fire. I would highly recommend you plan on bringing firewood with you. Why? Because there's never any firewood at a campsite. It, it, there just never is. Especially drive two ones. Everybody hoards it, takes it, steals it, does whatever they want to do with it. And you certainly don't want to be cutting down trees for a, for a fire. You, you don't want to do that. Bugs are a real, real issue. When you go car camping, bring a screen tent with you. Okay? Honestly. You can buy them for 150 bucks. Again, Costco, Canadian Tire, or whatever, bring a screen tent. Honestly, you're going to love life because then you just set that up, set your tent up, then set the screen tent up, move your gear into the screen tent. It gives you a secondary living space and it'll keep everybody happy and out of the bugs, especially if it's raining. Oh my God. You can sit inside that screen tent and just enjoy life, right? Uh, I would definitely bring one. Another neat little trick you can do, the new... There's a new thing going on with tents. I don't like them personally. They're called pop-up tents. Now they've been around for a long time, but now they're recently used for camping where you just, the tent comes in a bag. This one is actually a blind uh, for photography and et cetera, et cetera. But this is a pop-up blind. The pop-up tents work exactly the same way. And they fit in a pouch just like this, which aren't too terribly hard to carry. You throw it in the bottom of your vehicle, throw everything else on top, and it's good. Here's what's cool about a pop-up tent. Bring it with you. If you have the finances and if you have the means to carry it, bring it with you. And why? Because that keeps the kids... You know what? It gives them their own space. Whether they sleep in it or not, it doesn't matter. These pop-ups work like this. Ready? This thing always hits me in the face. <laughs> Here we go. So you bring your main tent, bring a screen tent for sure, and as a side tent just for fun, bring a pop-up for the kids. They can sleep in it. It's not a problem. The pop-up tents, by the way, have floors. This one does not. The kids will be safe from ticks and everything else, so they'll be fine. You know, eventually it's going to get dark, so one thing you do need is lights. This is a, a, a little headlight that I bought. It's made by Princeton, uh, Princeton Tech, and it's got three modes. It's got a red mode, which allows me to walk at night without losing my night vision, and it's got, um, it's got a bright white mode, which lights up the entire ground around you. 
At Costco, they have a three pack. Very, very good deal. Honest to God, very, very, very good deal. There's another light that I just picked up. Again, Costco. <laughs> and uh, this one's uh, Duracell 2000. So it's got three functions. That's bright white. Then it goes mid white, four functions, low white, and then it goes into a flasher unit, right? You know what's awesome about this? No batteries, man. It's USB chargeable. You just plug it into your charger. And guess what else? This will charge your phone. It will back charge your phone. You know why? It's solar powered. So in other words, during the day, this is going to solar charge while you're charging your phone, while it's charging the battery for the light. All of this stuff just fits nice and neat inside a bin. Believe it or not, two, three, maybe four bins tops and you're good to go. Yeah. Pack everything you need to be comfortable, but don't go crazy. I don't think you need to be bringing duvets and stuff, but to each their own, whatever makes them, whatever floats their boat, so to speak. Eh? Yeah, next I'll show you what a typical campsite looks like. And I'll, I'll just I'll just show you what to expect if you're if you're going to show up at a at a provincial park and you're a drive to camper. Okay, typically what's going to happen is you're going to drive up to your campsite and you're going to have a fire pit. Okay, you will have a fire pit, be it steel ringed as this one is, or just stone lined. Generally speaking, in campgrounds, they will be have steel rings. This particular campsite has a secondary fireplace and that's for when there's um, seasons when you're not supposed to be burning you can burn in those another thing that this campsite has is a barbecue sitting right beside it which is beautiful everything's all in one here everything's perfect and you've got your proverbial good old-fashioned picnic table all right that pretty much does this one and uh, happy camping eh? not oh, seriously happy camping there's nothing in the world like it